Today I'm going to show you how to make a little Valentine's teddy bear which you can make to go on your cake or make it smaller to add to cupcakes. I'm using light brown Saracino modeling paste for this bear. Break a piece off for the body and roll it into a ball. Once you've rolled it into a nice smooth ball, you're going to place your hands at a bit of a V shape to roll a big teardrop shape for his body. Place this on your mat and push down a little bit to make it sit upright on your mat. Each side of the bottom, press your fingers in just to indent a little bit for you to fit the legs in so they sit flush against the side of the body. You only need to do this a little bit. Now we're going to add a line up through the middle of your bear. I'm using a wheel tool and go down through the back middle. We're going to add some stitching to the bear and we're using it along this line. I'm using a chisel shaped color shaper to press some little stitches along the line. Now I cut the top of the teardrop shape off. This is where your bear's head is going to sit and I prefer the head to sit flush on top of the bear's body. If you leave it at the point, it kind of wobbles on the top. So now to make the legs, get two pieces of light brown modeling paste again and you're gonna roll these into nice smooth balls. Just set aside while you roll the next one and then you start with the first one to shape the leg. This just gives it time to settle a little bit. Roll along the top part of your palm. You want a fatter bulge on one end and then a little bit thinner on the top end for the leg shape. Do your second leg and shape it the same way. Now place the leg upright on your mat because I want flat pads on the bottom of my feet. So push it down on your mat and just twist gently between your fingers, pushing down towards your mat as you go along. And you will see you'll have a nice little flat foot to fit a pad on. Now I just use my fingers here to press it gently into the sides of the body. You can use a little bit of glue to stick it, um, but my paste was fairly tacky, so I didn't actually need glue at this point in my project. Each foot added, press slightly, and I'll show you what the front of the feet look like so that you can see how flat they go when you do that. Place down again, and I'm just pressing them a little bit firmer in so the legs become more part of the body, and they shape to in towards the body. Use a wheel tool again to add your lines on the legs for your stitching. And then you're going to get two small, lighter pieces of brown for the pads of the feet. You can use any color you want. I just went with the brown color. Once you've rolled two little balls, just use your fingers to press these flatter to make the pads of the feet. And press them out flat so that they fit within the foot, but leave a little bit of the foot showing around the edges. I should have added a little bit of glue here, but I didn't. So for the next one, I add some glue onto the foot first and I will add some glue behind the first one just to make sure that it's sticking properly. And then just add the, the little pads on. Gently press them on and in place. And then I use my fingers to just rub around the edges of the pad just to soften it and kind of push it down onto the foot nice and neatly onto your teddy's feet. So now we're going to cut out a heart. I always, if I'm doing hearts or flowers or anything to add to the bear, add it now before you do the arms because then you can wrap the arms around whatever you're adding to the front of the bear. So I cut this out. I've used a 3D printed cutter. So I just always scrape across the back to make sure I'm getting a nice clean cut. Pop the heart out and just shape it nicely to make sure there's no rough edges. And a little bit of sugar glue and pop this on your bear's belly. Now you're going to make some arms to hold the heart. So you're going to need pieces of paste, probably about half the size that you used for the legs. And start again with just rolling them into nice smooth balls. And you set one aside, get your next one, and then you start with the first one again. There you go. And you do the rolling of the shape for these very much like you did for your legs. You're just going a little bit thinner on the top because you don't want the shoulders sticking out too far. 
press the fatter end a bit flatter so that you've got a little pour on your bear. And make your second one. If the paste does get a little bit too tacky for you to work with, just set it aside for 30 seconds and try again. It, it sometimes just needs to be firmed up a little bit. Now, I've got a craft knife and I wanted to make a little thumb on this. So just cut a V out and then I use my craft knife just to round the edges a little bit on the palm or the paw. And so that your arms are ready to add to your bear. I also prefer, as you will see, I prefer bending the arm before I place them onto the bear. I place my arms quite high up on the bear near the neck and bend it and push fairly flat against the top of the body and then fix the, the hands as you're going along. I prefer them a little bit rounder, so I just tap them gently to make sure that I was rounding the, the finger and the palm off it a little bit more. The first hand I added over the heart and the second one just under the heart holding it. Once again, add your line for your stitching. And add your stitching. It was at this point I realized I hadn't added the stitching on the legs and so I add the stitching on the legs here too. your bear so far. So now we're going to make the head but we need some support. I use dry spaghetti in this. Um, if I'm ever making cake toppers for cakes that kids will be in contact with, I personally prefer to use dried spaghetti as it won't hurt the child and it's edible. Um, if I'm making just for adults I tend to sometimes use a cocktail stick um, but I do prefer spaghetti if possible for four little characters like this. For legs and things like that, if you need to make a standing the character, then yes, use a cocktail stick. So I rolled a ball for the head and then I press it a little bit flatter and shape it in an oval shape for the head. At this point, I held it up against my bear, but it wasn't quite big enough. I prefer my bear's heads to be a little bit bigger on their bodies. So I re-rolled it and it once again got it into an oval shape and then pressed it a bit flatter for the head. Just use your palm gently to just get that oval shape and round it at the front and a little bit flatter at the back. Press in place on your bear's body and just neaten up any edges and make sure it's nice and neat. Now for the stitching I added the lines again. I went up through the middle of the face and down the back of the head and then I also added along the sides from one side to the other. It's better to do this in the stitching before you do the eyes and the snout and everything on the bear. Um, adding it in afterwards, it, it can just be tricky and a bit fiddly. So just add all your detail in now before finishing the rest of the face. So quick and easy to add stitching with this little tool. And there you go, you're ready to start the face. So for the snout, I once again used a light brown piece of paste roll it into a ball and then get it into an oval shape once you have that oval shape place it on your mat and just gently press the shape to make it flatter you don't want to just stick an oval piece on the front of the bear's face it's going to stand out too far from the front so i always just use my fingers to smooth around the edges to really thin it out so when i stick it onto my bear's face it looks like it's part of his face rather than something extra standing out from the front Neaten it up if you need to and then gently pick up your bear and I feed the snout in from under the, what would be the bear's chin. So it's coming under the head rather than just stuck on the front of the face. Just neaten up any edges if you need to to keep it round and smooth and even. I'm just using a Dresden tool to do this and once again just to use my fingers just to press it nicely in place. I'm going to use a ball tool. Nope. I'm going to use the Arc Tool by Sweet Elite to create a little mouse and add the little line from the mouth up to where your nose will be. And just neaten that up as needed. 
Now I'm going to use a ball tool and make some little holes for the eyes to fit into. Again, you need to make the eyes before you make the nose because you put the nose in front of the eyes. If you do it the other way around, it's a bit tricky trying to get the eyeballs in. So you need a little bit of black paste, roll it into black balls for the eyes. And you don't want these too big. You don't want them bulging out. You want them to fit into the socket and stick out just a little bit. You don't want big bulgy eyes, but you also don't want them too small that they just vanish into the socket. So place them in place and just press neatly. Again, you can use some glue here, but just use a very little bit so it doesn't come out when you push the eyeballs in. And I also used my color shaper to add some eyebrows onto his face. Use a ball tool to indent where you're going to make the nose and get some darker brown paste this time. Roll it into a ball and then a tiny little oval shape and press that onto the face for his nose. And press gently into place. There you go. Now to add, make the ears. Obviously, you want your ears to be as even as possible. So I always find it's easier to make it out of one piece and have two equal pieces. So roll a piece of brown the same color as your bear and roll it into a ball. Just press it slightly with your finger to flatten it a little bit or a ball tool. And then get the lighter brown again and roll a smaller ball. And you're going to press this quite flat and then pop that onto this flattened part of the other piece. Now get your big ball tool again and push these together so you're making an indent in the middle. Then you're going to get a craft knife and you're going to cut this in half so you've got two equal ears. As you pick it up where you have the flatter side you're just going to pinch in slightly to give it more of a curved shape on the ear. Add some sugar glue and add your ears in place on your bear. This really does help keep ears as even as possible. And just adjust where necessary so it fits nicely. And there's your bear with its ears and face all completed too. Now all you need to do is you need to add a tail onto the back of him. So again, get the same color brown. I suppose you could also get a different color if you wanted to. And just roll a ball from paste and stick it on the back of him to complete the bear. Nice and easy, all done. I'm also going to show you how you can actually make a textured bear. So I'm going to start just the way I started the video with a body shape, just to show you. The best way if you're texturing with Saracino modeling paste is to texture straight after you've kind of shaped it because it's still a little bit tacky and it's warm. So use a Dresden tool. You can also use a cocktail stick and just work in circular little motions going around over and over again in the paste and this gives you a lovely curly fur effect on the bear and just go all the way around it if if you were actually doing this on a bear you do the front turn it around do the back and then you do each of the legs and then the arms and then the head of course so you do them individually and that's a lovely furry piece please subscribe and like and thank you for watching let me know what you'd like to watch next thank you